while we were walking the path of faith, oftentimes we were faced with trials, tribulations, and the burdens of carrying the cross. However, some people think of all these hardships as difficulties and suffering. Whereas others regard these hardships as greater blessings and happiness. Today, in order to understand why God tells us to be joyful always and give thanks in all circumstances, let us take some time to study God's Word under the sermon title, The Secret to Happiness and the Kingdom of Heaven. There was a man who always lived a happy life. The man was happy even though he was in pain and experienced much suffering. A broadcasting station thought that this man was an unusual person and went to conduct an interview with him. So they met the man and asked, Why are you always so happy about everything? Is there any special secret to being happy, even when you are going through hardships? And how can you be happy when you are going through difficulties? When I heard the man's answer, I thought to myself, isn't this man's answer something we should all keep in mind? The answer about his secret to happiness was as follows. While he was living his life, no matter how difficult, painful, challenging, or unpleasant things he faced were, he always regarded these things as happiness. This means that he got rid of the thought that his hardships were unfortunate. After I got rid of the thought of being unfortunate, my heart was filled with joy and overflowing with happiness. Furthermore, since I came to believe in God, the thought of being able to go to the eternal kingdom of heaven brings me the greatest joy and happiness in my life. From a spiritual point of view, a little bit of difficulty or a little inconvenience that we experience in our life is called a test. Some people might think, if it were not for that person around me, I would look better. When we encounter unfavorable situations, there are many people who consider them unfortunate. Other factors such as envious thoughts and jealous thoughts can eventually lead people to misfortune. Just like the story of the man who was always happy, some people are always happy even though they have less things in the world. However, some people feel that their lives are unhappy even though they have many things in the world. Let us turn to Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 19. Let's look at Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 19. Hear, O earth, I am bringing disaster on this people, the fruit of their schemes, because they have not listened to my words and have rejected my law. God said that what brings us disasters, what brings us blessings, what brings us happiness, and what brings us misfortune are the results of all our thoughts, the fruit of our thoughts. With the same circumstances, there are people who find themselves unhappy, but there are also others who find themselves happy. Tens of thousands of unwanted things and unfortunate situations are always happening around us. Whenever such unwanted things occur, we should be able to turn these negative things into positive energy, thinking, I am very happy. If I had many things, how much attention would I have wasted trying to maintain them? Instead, God has guided me in this way so that I can focus on the words of God and pay attention to the will of God. We should practice living our daily lives with this type of mindset. Some might ask, oh, how could I have this type of mindset in such a situation? That is why we need to practice having this mindset. If we practice once, practice twice, practice 10 times, and practice 100 times, from then on, everything will look pleasant and favorable. Let's go to the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16. Chapter 5, verse 16 reads, Be joyful always. Pray continually. 
Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. God tells us not to lose our gratitude, no matter what the circumstances. Even if there is a test that is so hard that makes you want to hit the ground and weep, or even if there is some incident that makes your heart ache, instead of looking at the situation with the eyes of pain, if you look at it with the eyes of happiness, everything will change. That is why God always emphasizes to us, be joyful always, give thanks in all circumstances. Who would like the situation where they grow old, lose energy, and have many wrinkles on their face? However, there are still things to be thankful for in that situation when we come to think about it. It is because the day when we will go to heaven is not far away. In the Bible, what does God teach us to do so that we can develop that kind of mindset? He teaches us to practice more and more. By doing as God teaches us to do, we are able to train ourselves to be godly. This is God's will for us. In fact, this is the mindset of those who cultivate themselves in the New Covenant. Let's continue with the book of 1 Timothy chapter 4. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6. If you point these things out to the brothers, you will be a good minister of Christ Jesus, brought up in the truths of the faith and of the good teaching that you have followed. Have nothing to do with godless myths and old wives' tales. Rather, train yourself to be. How should you train yourself to be? Godly. For physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. Everyone, we need to keep practicing obeying the words of God. We must put God's will into practice by obeying the words of God. The secret to happiness cannot be found anywhere else. When God led the Israelites to wander in the desert for 40 years, who created all those situations that they encountered? It was God who created all those situations. Sometimes He put them in a situation of hunger, sometimes in a situation of being humbled, and sometimes in a situation of thirst. God could have given them everything at once. Instead, they were put in a situation where they were in need or in a lower position. This is called a test, according to Deuteronomy chapter 8. It is written, God has tested your heart. The path of faith we are walking now is the path of testing. God sees whether we are joyful always. It is Father's will that we should be joyful always. And it is also His will that we should give thanks in all circumstances. However, if we say, I cannot give thanks in this situation, then we are failing the test. What does God say will come upon the whole world? Doesn't He say that the hour of trial is going to come upon the whole world? No matter what situation comes, if we never regard it as a misfortune, from then on, happiness will begin to come to us. No matter how hard Satan tests us, we never feel unfortunate. We are happy for this, and we are thankful for that. We are thankful for being with our Zion family members, and we are thankful for the simple fact that we are in Zion, the place of truth established by Heavenly Father and Heavenly Mother. We are also thankful for being allowed to go to the kingdom of heaven. Someone might ask, how can I be thankful when I am sick? Let us think about this for a moment. Even in that situation, you will surely find the reason to be thankful and the reason to be happy. Since God promises that He will soon grant us a world where there will be no more pain, I believe that all the heavenly family members will always be excited and have hope for the eternal kingdom of heaven with happiness when we think about going there. 
That is why it is written in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6, Train yourself to be godly. God tells us not to waste our time on unnecessary things. Instead, He tells us to focus only on training ourselves to be godly. There is joy and thanksgiving in the secret to being happy. God says, give thanks in all circumstances. It is a regulation commanded by God. All the will of God is contained in that regulation. Doesn't the Bible say, whoever does the will of Father will go to the kingdom of heaven? Despite this will of Father, if you say, I can keep the Sabbath day and the Passover, but I cannot keep the commandment to give thanks in all circumstances, you should be awake. We must obey all the will of Father. In order to reach that level of faith, we must practice and practice again. If you do not have that kind of mindset, after practicing once, try ten times. If you still do not have that kind of mindset, after practicing ten times, try one hundred times. If one hundred times is not enough, try two hundred or three hundred times. Therefore, no matter what situations happen to us, let us not regard it as a reason for unhappiness. Let us think, in order to lead me to the eternal kingdom of heaven, God sometimes humbled me, sometimes made me hungry, and sometimes made me cold and naked. Sometimes God put me in difficult situations in order to know what was in my heart, whether or not I would keep His commands. God, I'm so happy because I overcame all the difficulties that I face today. In a little while, aren't you going to lead me to the eternal kingdom of heaven that you have prepared for me? When we think of this, we can be happy no matter how old we are and no matter what kind of disease we carry in our bodies. Our physical bodies are like the garments of our souls. If they are used a lot, they will wear out. And if they are worn out, they will need to be repaired. Being in pain can happen to us at any time. For this reason, doesn't God promise us, I will give you the world where there will be no more pain? This is the greatest news. There will be no more death. Isn't this news phenomenal? Considering that God will grant us a gracious world where there is no suffering, pain, or sorrow, we must become the children of Zion who can find the reasons to be happy in the truth. As it is written in 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6, we must build up the power to turn our unhappiness into positive thoughts by practicing it. This is how we can train ourselves to be godly. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 6. We can learn many lessons from the faith of Apostle Paul, who is one of the forefathers of faith. Chapter 6, verse 7 reads, For we brought nothing into the world, and we can take nothing out of it. But if we have, if we have what? Food and clothing. We will be content with that. Apostle Paul was such a happy man. Rather than wanting to have more than others or wanting to have more luxuries than others, he said, when we came to this earth, we brought nothing with us. So when we leave this earth, we cannot bring anything with us. Isn't that natural? In his life, he found himself happy and satisfied as long as he had food and clothing. Apostle Paul received 40 lashes minus one, even five times. He was in danger from rivers and from bandits and in danger from his own countrymen. Although many trials and dangers came before him, he never thought of them as trials or sufferings. Rather, he moved forward with only joy in his heart and hope for the eternal kingdom of heaven, which he would enjoy later. The darker it is and the gloomier it is, the brighter the light shines, doesn't it? That is why Apostle Paul knew how to be happy 
as long as he had food to eat and clothes to wear. Let's continue with verse 9. People who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge men into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. But you, men of God, flee from all this and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of the faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. God will grant this glorious moment not only to Apostle Paul, but also to all the children of Zion in the near future. Everyone, the secret to happiness cannot be found anywhere else. We should think that all the sufferings we have been going through are not unfortunate. Since it is written in the Bible, everything is the fruit of our thoughts. When we have such thoughts, we will always be able to rejoice and give thanks in everything we do. In this way, we will be able to follow God's will completely. Now, shouldn't all of our remaining time of faith be that way? Those who do not regard their circumstances as unfortunate can always be happy and maintain the faith to give thanks in all circumstances, which is God's will. However, what if we do the opposite? Let's turn to the book of James, chapter 1, verse 14. But each one is tempted. When people are tempted, they feel unfortunate rather than happy. They feel that they are unhappy with the situation they are in. But each one is tempted when, by his own evil desire, he is dragged away and enticed. Then, after desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, gives birth to death. It is good for us to have desires for the kingdom of heaven. However, worldly desire leads us to temptation and unhappiness. Also, what we have practiced, to be godly and to have the mindset to never consider any circumstances as unhappy, is taken away. That is why it is written in verse 12, Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial. Let's turn to the book of James chapter 1, verse 12. Blessed is the man who perseveres under trial, because when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life that God has promised to those who love him. Verse 14 says, Each one is tempted when by his own evil desire he is dragged away and enticed. This is something that destroys happiness. We should never think that we are unhappy under any circumstance. If we ever think, I am unhappy, we will be dragged away from being happy. Then, we will end up living a life that is far from happiness. Where does this result come from? It comes from worldly desires. Since worldly desires keep infiltrating our hearts, we come close to doing the things that are not pleasing to God. And when we enter into such a life, we are bound to receive misfortune rather than happiness. We must always remain in God. Those who remain in God do not see any unhappiness because they do not have the eyes of unhappiness. During the 40-year journey in the desert, they could not eat or drink as they desired. At times they were naked, cold, and hungry. Even in tens of thousands of difficult circumstances, Apostle Paul and the members of the early church never turned away from God. The love of Christ pulls us closer and compels us. In this way, they express their mindset. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Everyone, they are always happy in God. The Bible says, 
everyone who wants to live a godly life in Christ Jesus will be persecuted, even when they face persecution. They did not regard it as unfortunate thinking. In order to forgive our sins, our Lord walked a more painful path than the path we are walking. Now God acknowledged me and called me to live the same life as His life. Instead of feeling miserable, they felt happier and happier, thinking that they were sharing in Christ's sufferings. From this moment on, no matter what situation God gives us, let us turn any unfortunate situation into a happy one. When God allows us to complete all the gospel work on this earth, we will immediately go to the kingdom of God and wear the crown of glory that He has prepared for us. We will carry out the duty of the royal priesthood in heaven, being served by countless angels. We will also enjoy eternal life and blessings forever and ever in the world of eternity, where we will never grow old. Won't this glorious time be given to us? I believe that those who always think about this glorious time in the future will be able to follow the will of God that is written in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you. The secret to happiness lies in nothing else. From the spiritual perspective, the moment we think or say that the situation is unfortunate or unfavorable, all our energy is turned into negative energy. However, if you think the situation is fortunate, just as I told you in the story, you will be happy no matter how old you are. Some people might ask, isn't it sad to grow old? However, we should respond, I'll meet Father in a little while. So why would I be sad? Rather, I am waiting for that glorious moment with happiness. We can say that this kind of mindset leads to the right kind of faith and that we have lived a righteous life. Sometimes God humbles us. Sometimes He makes us hungry. And sometimes He makes us thirsty. God has prepared all these situations for us. After overcoming these situations, God will lead us to the kingdom of heaven. This is what our expectation should be. We should never complain by asking, what have I done wrong before God that my family is in such a difficult situation? During the 40-year journey in the desert, many Israelites complained and grumbled. As a result, they committed acts that were not pleasing to God. Today, with the fact alone that we are now in the truth, how should we regard our situation? Zion family members in India always ask this question when they meet with their members at church. Aren't you happy? When they are asked, aren't you happy? Everyone answers that they are happy. All the family members of Zion, whether in India or around the world, go through difficult situations. However, they never regard their situations as unfortunate. They are happy. So I said, has there been a greeting like that? I must learn it. I need to practice a little more to train myself to be godly. Everyone, happiness comes from the mindset of thinking that you are happy, no matter what the circumstances. Apostle Paul also said, if we have food and clothing, we will be content with that. We must always live our lives walking toward the kingdom of heaven. On the other hand, I have seen some people fall into a great temptation because of the worldly desires that caused them to feel distressed. Eventually, they were led to sin and brought to death. You must never be that kind of person. God teaches us to be joyful always in Him. And He also teaches us to give thanks to Him. Then why do you say you are unhappy? Why do you say you are depressed? Why do you say it is hard? Everyone, through this sermon delivered on Sabbath day, we must realize that you and I are happy people. Everyone, aren't you really happy? Everyone, please repeat after me. I am happy.
I am happy because I am in God. I am happy because I have hope for heaven. I am happy because I am with father and mother. I am happy because I have heavenly family. I am happy because I am in the truth. As I previously mentioned, there are so many things that we should be happy about. However, just because we are humbled a little or because we experience small inconveniences in our daily life, we let go of all our happiness and cling to the meaningless and trivial things saying, I am unhappy. We must never become the foolish people who lose faith, leave the truth, give up the kingdom of heaven, and desert God because of trivial matters. Since Satan constantly attempts to attack us in that way, God has fortified us by giving us warnings in advance. What does God say we must always do? God says be joyful always. When God says be joyful always, He meant be happy always. No matter what situations we are faced with, and no matter what happens to us, we should never think, this is unfortunate. This is because the Bible says that all things are a result of our thoughts. In this way, I would like to ask all of you to become evangelists who can deliver happiness to those around us who are living unhappy lives. We must go to them and say, if you believe in God, you will be this happy. We have hope for the kingdom of heaven. We have the kingdom of heaven where there is no death and no pain. Who has prepared the kingdom of heaven where eternal life and blessings abound? Father and mother have prepared everything. Why are we unhappy when we are going to this wonderful world? Sometimes we walk barefoot because we do not have shoes. We may walk under the scorching sun for a while because we do not have something to protect us from the sunshine. However, should we stop walking our path because of these hardships? No, we should not. Everyone, we are indeed very happy people. Since we do not think about how to be happy in all circumstances, we eliminate 99.9% .9 of the happiness factor and think, I am unhappy with this. And I am unhappy with that. Why is this happening to me? Why me? Why me? We must not commit the act of foolishly living like this. That is why we need to practice training ourselves to be godly. No matter what circumstances we find ourselves in, we should think, everything that happens to me is a fortunate thing. But now Satan is trying to make me see all these occurrences as unfortunate things. In the truth of the new covenant, we must practice getting rid of the mindset that we are unhappy. God has allowed us to go to heaven. So why are we unhappy? We are happy. God has granted us the forgiveness of sins. So why are we unhappy? We are happy. We met our father. So why are we unhappy? We are happy. We met our mother. So why are we unhappy? We are happy. You and I are truly happy people and indeed happy beings. We should not talk as if we are unhappy or we should not say things as if we are unhappy or unfortunate, which makes us feel frustrated. We should realize how happy we are. According to the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, what does it say about those who cannot enter the kingdom of heaven? It is written, those who grumble will not go to the kingdom of heaven. Why is that? It is because those people did not realize the truth of the new covenant. They are those who have been baptized but have not followed the way of the new covenant. God does not force us to follow His command, do not grumble. However, if we realize the secret to happiness, all grumbling and complaints will disappear. It is because we always rejoice. It is because we can give thanks in all circumstances. Those who give thanks in all circumstances never grumble. Those who rejoice all the time do not complain. When you are happy, you never get angry, no matter what the people around you may do. 
It is because you are happy. Everyone, we often forget to think how happy we are in the truth of the new covenant and how much we ought to rejoice every day. Let us think of the special gift of the new covenant from father and mother, the grace of the forgiveness of sins and the privilege of going to the kingdom of heaven. If we regard all these blessings as insignificant, we will come to focus our attention on even the most trivial things in the world. And we will become foolish people like Esau, trying to give away the glory of heaven in exchange for just a few sweet words that ultimately drag us back to the world. From this moment on, since the truth of the new covenant is the truth that brings us happiness, we must continue to find happiness in it. Let us keep practicing finding happiness. When we are faced with an unfortunate situation, we should not think that we are unhappy, but approach it from the perspective of happiness. Then God will say to us, you do not complain, even though you are in such a situation, you have now become heavenly people. Now I will guide you to the kingdom of heaven. There will come a day when father and mother will surely judge us in this way. That is why God says, those who grumble will not enter the kingdom of heaven. From this moment on, even if there are problems with your family, your children, your neighbors, or your friends, and even if tens of thousands of unpleasant things happen while preaching, let us find the reason to be happy in that situation, thinking that God created all of these situations and people in order to test whether we find ourselves happy or not. Also, I hope that you will be able to share happiness and joy and even the kingdom of heaven with many people around us who are in despair. By this, I would like to conclude this sermon. Thank you very much.